Um, another welder. That one there I paid $176 for with free shipping on eBay, and they actually shipped it for free, so <laughs> I was surprised. <laughs> and uh, yeah, good, good welder. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. And I'm, I'm not going to, how much money I've found these welders, I don't know. Yeah, this one here I paid $600 for, along with a whole bunch of um, welding rod that came with it. And the welding rod was worth more than the welder. Um, this one is a induction heating unit, uh, 25 kilowatt Miller. Uh, actually never used it, got lots of accessories with it. It came along and yes, I only paid $400 for it, as long as we're being honest on everything, but we're not selling it for $400. <laughs> that won't happen. I don't know if we'll use it or not. The thing I like about that one over our uh, other one that we've got is it's got the cooler built into it with a little tank and everything so it, uh, you don't have to run other water lines to it, self-contained, which is pretty nice. Hydraulic press. Hydraulic press. It's pretty hard to give a number on it. I don't remember. I think I paid $750 for it. It is a 75 ton. It is a KR Wilson. It's 5,000 PSI as opposed to most of your newer hydraulic presses like this that run 10,000 PSI. Uh, I initially thought it was a 50 because when I was in college, we used one that looked quite similar that was a 50 ton, but it, they make these in multiple sizes. And I finally found out because I found a catalog on them and when we had it apart and resealed it, uh, we measured the bore size and that's the one they consider a 75 ton, which works out to being 75 ton at 5,000 PSI. So since they all use the same pump, that's what I'm figuring the pressure is for those. We converted it to electric. Uh, it should have a stop, but it doesn't. You could actually break the cylinder by letting it run too far. We <laughs> have in mind to put a to put a rack gear on there, and we're going to put a put a micro switch on there to stop it, give it an end stop point. Anything you do out here would be in the way. This this has, uh, which is nice on these. This have a built-in arbor press. It's got a three-ton arbor press. Uh, that's what I believe that's what they said those were was good for three ton and uh, which is more than I would think that that gear is good for but um, anyway handy for real light stuff <clears throat> alternate to machinery um, lots of steel tables I use steel tables all the time we bring them in we bring them out they have made us lots and lots of money um, some of these things we can put money, put names to. I can't really put a number to what steel tables have done. First ones I bought for $200 a piece. Uh, the most I've paid was four something. Generally, they go for over $1,000 at most auctions, um, but I don't pay that much money. <clears throat> I just don't. Drill press. Uh, bought this military surplus. They had picked it up with forks and damaged part of the ways underneath here so that it had a place it wouldn't move to at first. We had to stone it, stone out a uh, squished spot that they'd put in it. I paid $1,300 for it. It also had a bad set of, the clutches weren't bad for the spindle, <coughs> spindle forward, but the clutch arms were bad. So I had to buy new arms for it. And there was still people that were making parts for Carlton. And uh, it has probably directly, probably $20,000 worth of work. Not a lot. It's been more really helpful for a few little things here and there. Not, not huge work on it. <clears throat> this one. I don't remember. The reason I bought this one, we use our horizontals quite a bit here. And the Cincinnati that's in the other room, it was going squeak, 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 squeak when we'd run it. And so I started looking for another horizontal. And horizontals had gone up in price a little bit. I didn't uh, see good deals right at first. I looked at this one, was way back 
uh, on the East Coast. And I think they wanted 3500 for it. And I got a roughly $4,000 shipping quote for it. <clears throat> and I asked the people that were doing the shipping if they could do better. And I asked the guy that, and then I thought about it a little bit. And the guy that was selling it, I said, well, will you take 2500 So I was figuring at 2500 even with 4000 for shipping. And same emails came back, emails from each came back at about the same time. They went down to 2500 for shipping and he took the 2500 So for 5000 I got it here. The big thing that was deterring me, oh, and the, I paid him another 350 to crate it though too. So we had a little over 5000 in it yet. Um, and crating it, he crated it in a beautiful, I don't know where he found so much surplus oak, but it was beautiful oak boards, everything. It was one of prettiest crates I'd seen for 350 bucks. I know he didn't buy, the, the boards would have cost way more than that. <clears throat> but the big thing was when I first looked at this, the pictures. I'm looking at pictures and I see rust all over the machine and I had just before that bought the boring mill that was rusted and I was kind of like, well, you know, a lot of times rust on these, they're just junk. Um, other times the rust cleans off nice, which the boring mill did. So I just bought the boring mill a little bit before I got this one, and I was like, I decided that I was going to gamble on the rust, even though we just, we'd gamble on it. And when it got here, I pulled the first board off the crate, and I just cracked up laughing because his pictures were so bad that what looked like rust was actually Cosmoline. The machine had never been used. So this one really turned out to be a good deal. Um, we have used it a lot in the past, not a lot recently. I don't know, um, probably $50,000 worth of work, I would guess. Don't know for sure. <clears throat> this one I bought new. The time that I bought it, I had been looking at um, Vectrax out of uh, MSC, had a similar machine, uh, supposed to be of a better quality, and they had them for 7,500 with three axis power feed and a digital readout forever. And by the time I got serious to want to buy one, they'd raised that price to like 12 or 15,000. And I was like, eh. <laughs> So I bought this one at that time for $3,950 instead. And this is which they've also gone up if you buy comparable new ones. It's a 10 by 50. Um, I have no doubt that I've done $150,000 worth of work on it. Um, and it's not a super accurate mill. Uh, we, we added readout to it. Um, <clears throat> bridge ports aren't a lot of times either. You'd be surprised how inaccurate they are. But uh, there is some geometric problems between the knee and I forget what it is anyway, but the, the knee travel is a little bit wacky. Um, it does what we need to for the most part, but it's not, it's not dead on machine. This one, when we uh, saw it, it was covered, it was rusty. This was covered with rust and it was an interesting thing after we brought it in, um, covered it, uh, just put oil on it and wipe it down. Didn't touch it with a stone or anything for quite a while. Eventually went to, to oiling and stoning the ways and they, it's, they're in nice shape. But um, the one thing that didn't, it lived outside two year, for two years before I got it. Um, not before, not while I was, but before they put it up for auction. It was military also. And it had been used uh, in a power plant originally, then they pulled it out of the power plant and it went to a shop that was doing uh, jet um, tagline. Uh, they have a tagline for helping the jet to land on a shorter space in the runway. And the maintenance shop for those tagline winch assemblies, um, they had this machine and they really didn't have any need for it but they built a angle plate while they had it and played with it. And finally it got to the point where they were allowed to sell it. But unfortunately when it was put out for sale, 
like happens many times with the military, it just went to a blank yard where it goes outside, sets in the rain, and they go through certain, uh, like, all kinds of paperwork came with it to tell me that there was no oil. It was all cleaned. They had pressure washed it. Not only had they pressure washed it outside, they'd pulled the plugs in the gearboxes and pressure washed in the gearbox to make sure there was no oil so that it was good and no contamination, which I didn't know about that when I was first buying it, but um, there's still a rust color that comes out of the gearboxes because of that. The gearboxes are a little scary. Um, good tight quill, machine works good, but there's just a little bit of a scare uh, to the orange color that still comes out every time we change the oil. Um, it was sad that they did that. Um, the, actually, the box up here, they didn't clean it, probably too much bother. This one actually had oil in it. It was the lower one that they pulled the plug out of. But they pulled the plug out of on the top, washed it, and then they put the plugs back in and left it full of water. So that's, that was kind of bad there. Um, the other thing that was bad with this machine, <clears throat> when we got it, it was missing. It was missing. They had pulled the table off. The table was sitting next to it. And it was missing this piece here, the bearings. Um, I don't know if it had both of the, the, the shafts or if it was missing a shaft too, but it was missing a whole bunch of parts. And I didn't know that, of course, until I went to pick it up. And when I went to pick it up and I start looking and seeing that things are missing to put it back together, uh, I was a little distraught. Managed to get a hold of the shop, and that's why I knew uh, the guy at DRMO at that time was able to call. They, don't, they can't do that anymore. They've limited their access to the people that get rid of stuff. They can't do that now. Fortunately, at that time, they could still get a hold of the people. They called him up, and the guy that had sent this out from the little shop, he said, yeah, I, I know that things get confused and lost at times. Yeah, I've got all that set in here. And so I made an agreement. I had to make a second run to Anchorage to get it, but um, he let me have, gave me all the pieces, missing a couple bolts or something, but pretty much all of it. <coughs> and then... Uh, then the, uh, ang he gave me the angle plate, gave me some multi-tooth uh, high-speed steel, but some big face cutters that came with it that uh, otherwise wouldn't have got any of that if I hadn't gotten a hold of him. And uh, so that was okay. And like I say, it cleaned up nice. I had bid $4,065 on it. Had I known how good of a machine it is, I would have bid more, but, and it's, probably been responsible probably 200,000 you know not a huge part of well I don't know we did that too could could stretch as high as 300,000 that we've made with it I'm not sure I'm not sure you know you look at sometimes the smaller more basic because you use them more you know um, and here's one right here <clears throat> And it would be hard to pin down a number. It's normally just dogs or anything. Ah, drill press. <laughs> this was actually my first machine that I put in the shop um, specifically for the shop and to stay here. I did have an Atlas lathe previous to that. The Atlas lathe did absolutely no customer work. I paid $850 for it, sold it for $800 after I bought this lathe, uh, sold it to a friend. <clears throat> Um, but it was a nice, nice little lay that allowed me while I was working with the shop and it saved me a few times for parts that I needed for the foam spray machine for uh, doing the insulation on the roof. So it was good to have. You, you got to have something once you know how to use this stuff. You just got to have something around. This one, I bought the main, it looked similar to this for $200. Uh, drill press and then I paid another I think 150 for a second drill press which is the one that this head is off of because the first one I bought just had a fixed chuck on it and this one is Morris taper oh, it's down there Morris taper like all drills should be the table was full of holes everywhere just nasty so I brazed up the table remachined the table so it was square 
and we put uh, inverter drive on it and we've got it set so that you can hit the button and hit the floor switch and do tapping. And I had also a second switch for making it do left hand tapping, but the wire came loose and it does, that doesn't work. Uh, <clears throat> that was back in my days that I understood the idea of wiring, but I hadn't really got into fully to industrial wiring. Even though I'd done industrial wiring for other companies, somehow my brain just went to this, oh, you gotta save money, you're doing it for yourself. You know, these stupid light box, stupid electric switch box, dumb, dumb. Regul use regular boxes, use regular switches. Don't, don't use phony stuff just because somebody else did or you thought it was gonna be cheap. <clears throat> use the industrial, I, and I had. I'd actually worked for another place where I did industrial maintenance wiring, and I would have never done that there. But on my own nice little drill press, I did. Anyway, painted it up, no idea. Uh, you know, it's been part of a million dollars worth of work or more, but as far as itself, it's a handy deburring tool most of the time. This was actually, came this uh, <clears throat> TIG bench now, but it, it originally came with our other Marvel saw, the one it was actually uh, the feeder for our Marvel 81A, which we never used and didn't work, we just used it as, as a non-automatic version and uh, put a piece of plate on it. So, uh, <clears throat> And we have a rod oven that we don't plug in, but it's a place to keep our rod anyway. <coughs> have a GTSW 400 uh, TIG welder down there, and I hunted for that for quite a while. I think I paid 2200 for it. Um, <coughs> we've got several of these little GTSW 250s floating around. Once I started using those and realizing how nice they were, I thought I'd like to find a bigger one. And so I looked for the, this one here, and I saw one. They only wanted $1,200 for it. It was brand new surplus, and it was sold by the time I figured out that it actually was the current model. I thought since it was a steel case and the others were plastic and other welder manufacturers, bigger ones were using fiberglass cases, I figured the sheet metal was an older version. No, that was actually their last biggest version of it they made. They just never made it into a fiberglass case version. Got to looking at them a few years later, <clears throat> found out that they were $8,000 is what it should have cost. And I said, no, nah, I'm not spending that on a TIG welder, even though it has the amount of amperage and functions I like. <clears throat> so I kept looking. Finally, it showed up for $2,200. I bought with the cooler. Um, no, it didn't have a cooler. No, this one did not have the cooler. I paid the 2200 for it. And then right after I bought it, the next week, a second one showed up for $1,000 with the cooler. And I said, oh, well. So I bought that one, too. So we have a backup for this now, because you spend years. I spent close to 10 years looking for one, because once I decided I was ready to spend the 8000 and buy it, they were no longer made. It was an obsolete machine. There are comparable machines today. <clears throat> what was so special to me about this? Why, why this one? Why not a Lincoln, a Miller, or whatever? At the time, and for several years later, it was the only welder I could find that used 483 phase input and gave AC welding output. Most of your TIG welders, and, and most of your TIG welders still, use single phase input. Single phase input means I need a bigger cord, dedicated power for it, but with this right here, I can use my standard 480 10 gauge and run it to 90% of its maximum without having to have any special wiring for it. And you want the AC output so that you can get the cleaning for doing aluminum, <clears throat> which is the main reason for me to have a TIG is aluminum. Uh, silicon bronze is fun too. <clears throat> and yes, yes, stuff that uh, 
that's part of my being benevolent to people that work here and part of why they're Austin's got a project he's working on. It's not in our way today, but yes, it makes the shop look messier. So what? We, you know, it's just the way it is today. Um, shelves, drawers. I got a bunch of those drawers given to me. I bought more at auction. Um, the shelves, <clears throat> I bought a whole bunch of those shelf units, military surplus, and then we knocked them all down and just took regular angle iron and put them together on a taller height so that we could make use of the space. The IMCO lathe, I think I paid 32000 for it. Um, <clears throat> it was really nice. I did a few jobs, brought in about 50000 working it for roughly six months to a year that I used it on and off just a few times. We didn't use it that much, but when we did have some work for it, it sat for about nine months, went to use it, battery was dead. There's occasionally times I'd like to use it, but it's not worthwhile. <clears throat> At this point, I need to find somebody that's really familiar. It's a uh, really common Siemens controller. I forget what model it is. Uh, it's 4, 480, yeah, it's 4, 480D, 480D, which is a common controller, but I couldn't make sense. Um, I'm sure I could if I really forced, but I don't know. I don't know. I just couldn't make sense as far as how to reload stuff. The machine was all working until the battery went dead in the memory. Uh, you turn it on, it works, but it doesn't work. And so that's why I don't use it at all now. Not quite to the point of being a, wanting to kick it out for space. I probably have got one time every two to three years that I want to use it if it was going. Um, I probably, if I get somebody here and we make it go, I will probably use a battery converter of some sort so that we can, instead of having little wimpy batteries, we can have second outside of it so that we can just leave power to it all the time, even if we're not playing with it. And I know, ideally you should turn it on and run everything every now and then anyway, but <clears throat> we, we don't have that much call for it. Um, let's see, there's another drill press. We walked by, which we're still in the process. We used it for a little while and then the motor quit because it, it was a single phase motor. I think I paid $400 for it, but I'm not sure I bought that from a friend. Um, <clears throat> and we put a three phase motor on it. We put the inverter in it. We just haven't finished quite uh, making it go. Same idea as the little drill press. Not that important to us. As you can see, it's uh, just holding stuff at this point. This is where our Maho CNC's were. Move them outside. <clears throat> and we can just wait to talk about them and the why and why they're not now. Why they're not now is, is a combination of not really needing them and you know just not having the work that makes sense for them most of the time and we need the space although it's just a mess right now um, i guess that's pretty much it as far as machines that are in the shop we've got a whole bunch of them outside too we need more shop space you know, the shop is, is the really big cost. And while some of those numbers that I was adding up on these machines sounded high while I was doing it, I know overall a lot of them have got to be low because we've done several, several, I think total gross through here, I think, I don't know, but it, it's considerably more millions than what that ad, those numbers added up to. Of course, some of that is machines that aren't in here anymore, too. Ones that we've used for a while, made sense for a while, and then moved out. So, I don't know. Kind of a description of the machines and how we came about them. It would be more interesting, some of the out-of-the-way things. Mag drills over here, too. That was one of those I bought day one. Need to have a mag drill, just like a surface grinder. Same thing. 
although the mag drill, I used it after about six years, but it actually sat here for about six years, and I did not use it. Uh, I paid 1900 almost 2000 for that when I bought it. I bought it brand new because I wanted to have the best one I could get, right new, bought lots of extra collets for it. The second one I got for 850 off of eBay, and I don't know which one is which. <clears throat> The second one was good too, and they've both been used a lot now. So, yeah, lots of stuff. 